everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're talking about this right here. We've got a signal popping up on the models here on the Euro model, and then also on the GFS of a new snowstorm. Details are a little murky in terms of being able to figure out exactly what it's going to do. Could be our first decent snowstorm over here near Kansas and Nebraska, also up in the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains. As you can see, temperatures are just barely hanging on below freezing. We'll be talking about the chances that this storm will actually happen or not. And also talk a little bit about the severe weather that is going to be possible on the southern side. Also, after the storm, we've got another one that could potentially happen after it as well. GFS not really buying it. The Euro really gets a decent storm going as we move into the second. Let's go ahead and break all that down, give you everything you need to know. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you do end up enjoying this forecast. And let's get right to it. In terms of our weather alerts out currently today, we do have an area of low pressure sinking down into the United States. This is actually pretty important to note here. We'll be talking about this guy later on as well. But as you can see, a lot of our red flag warnings down here in California have been replaced with some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings here in the pink. It's mainly going to be for the higher elevations out there. Believe it or not, a little bit of rain is going to be coming through these areas, really putting a clamp down on those fire chances out in these regions. That's why we don't have any red flag warnings right now out here. Although out in Arizona, we are starting to see some red flag warnings out here near Tucson, Heroica, and Phoenix. Isn't really in that red flag warning, but just to the north of it is. Further across the country, we still have another little clipper system here that's about to enter into parts of the northern Great Lakes, moving into the UP of Michigan and northern Michigan, potentially bringing some snowy conditions up there, maybe a little bit of accumulation up here between two to five inches in northern Michigan, and then eventually uh, we could see maybe a little bit of snow squall action over here in New York today with the potential for three to seven inches being possible. Also back over here in the mountains of Utah and Colorado and southern Wyoming, we've got some winter weather advisories out there. Five to 10 inches being possible in the mountainous regions to the east of Salt Lake City. And then also in northern Colorado and southern Wyoming, we're expecting anywhere from one to four inches still to come. You're looking across the United States over the next three days or so. Uh, you can see that as we move into tonight and into the afternoon, we're going to start to see some snow move down into northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. Also a little bit of snow over there in Michigan. Eventually, that's going to push all the way down to the south and east into parts of Pennsylvania and New York. You can see it's a pretty quick hitting system. System, but we could definitely get some heavier snowfall up here north of Utica, eventually moving into areas like Vermont and New Hampshire. But it's going to be a very fast moving storm, so we're not expecting too much accumulation. We're watching out for a little bit of maybe a lake effect snow band developing here it could bring some extra accumulations here south of kingston as i continue to push this forward you can see that lake effect snow band lasts all the way through the 26th going into the 27th as well and then eventually starts to dissipate uh, as we move into the afternoon hours of the 27th back over here in the southwest parts of nevada going into utah wyoming and colorado we're going to continue to see that snow that you're seeing right now last uh, pretty much all throughout the day moving into the 25th 27th sixth and then eventually uh slowly starting to dissipate as we get into the 26th in the afternoon hours could see some little bits of rain here and there also uh for parts of southern california that's really going to get started here on the 25th going through 12 p.m 7 p.m still a little bit of rain chances there some snow up there in the higher elevations that's going to continue off of the coast into more of inland california as we go into the 26th at around 12 a.m and then as we move into 27th still a little bit of rain sticking around there so we're really not going to see those fire chances get back going until that dissipates the reason we have fire chances over here in arizona today is because of all of this dry air as you can see the dew points are very low but eventually that starts to change as we move into the 26th so we're not going to really see as elevated as a fire danger going into tomorrow but today we do have some red flag warnings because not only do we have low dew points today you see in our mountainous regions here we're definitely going to see an escalation of 20 to 30 maybe even 40 mile per hour winds uh, up there north of phoenix and that should subside a little bit as we go into the nighttime but still some heavier winds south of phoenix still trying to hang in on there Anywhere from 30 to 40 mile per hour winds are going to be possible up there. And as we go into the 26th, those dew points start to move in and those winds start to die down. 
which I really do think that's going to lower the fire risk going into the 26th. Now hopping over to the long range. We are looking out over the United States here. You can see Canada's up there. Lower 48 is down here in this region. Red blobs are representing high pressure. So area where the pressure is higher in the air is sinking. You're not going to really see too much rain or thunderstorm activity in the center of those. And over here in the blue and green, and kind of darker blue as well, those are the low pressure systems. And these are essentially show you rising air around these areas. A little bit higher chance of seeing some precipitation and maybe even some snow. And as we move into the 25th here, pretty much throughout the day, which is when we highlighted that little low pressure system out over California, a little swirl out there is going to bring a little bit of rain to Southern California. This is what it's causing it. This little low pressure diving down to the south as the ridge kind of dissipates over here south of a Alaska. Pretty big low pressure system over here in northeastern Canada. The main focus is down here in the west coast because eventually the EPS, the averages, brings us into the central plains and then pushes it up into Texas, parts of Oklahoma there, and then moves off to the north and east. Now, because of the positioning here of all of our low pressure systems, we've got cooler air coming down from this high pressure system, coming in, being dragged in by this low pressure system right here, but this low pressure system is going to be spinning, pulling some air up like this from the south up to the north kind of putting a big question mark whether or not temperatures are going to be cold enough over here in the northern plains or not but eventually that low pressure system will move out of our hair and then another one's going to try to sink down into the united states kind of in the similar region push down into the southern united states and then eventually move up into the northern united states near the great lakes and the ohio valley as well in the orientation of everything here a little bit of a weaker low pressure system there as we move into the seven high pressure system sitting over Alaska. Could be some cold air potential with this setup. So we might have to watch out for yet another Arctic air intrusion coming out of the Arctic down into the United States. So we'll be keeping an eye on this pattern setup to see how it changes over time, but we were really far out, so kind of murky on the details still. Here's our 500 millibar jet stream, and as you can see, you got a sinking low pressure system there. You can see those winds aloft. These are way above your head, moving west to east here across the southern portion of the United States, about to move into the southern plains. As you can see, as we move into the 30th, low pressure system is all the way down here in the south, really tapping into some Pacific moisture. And some decent upper level winds are definitely possible with this storm as it moves into Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. So we're not only going to be watching out for snow on the northern side, which is certainly possible, but also for the chances for severe weather to return. At this time, it's looking a little bit marginal. It looks like the instability is struggling, but that could uptrend as we get closer or it can continue to stay kind of a weak system. But one thing that we do need for this thing to produce severe weather and even snow is we really looking at the lower level winds, or at least over here in the 850 millibar range. And as I push this through, you can see that as we get that thing eject down here into the United States, we move into the 30th. And we also are seeing a pretty decent signal here for some lower level winds to pick up with this storm. You're also going to need some instability and a lot of other factors. But just the fact that both of these things are present means not only do we have to watch up for snow on the northern side, but also the chances for some severe weather as this moves into the southeast, as we do have some lower level winds going in this direction. And then we have perpendicular upper level winds in the 500 millibar range moving in this direction. You can only imagine those intersect. That could cause some spin in the atmosphere. Really don't feel like saying the word tornado right now, given the fact that we're so far out, but it's certainly something to monitor. And we're going to come over here and look at the GFS. I really like this view. You can really get an understanding of what's going on in the map. And I'll explain to you really quickly before we get into it. These little blue lines that you see, those are areas of low pressure and these red lines are areas of high pressure and we also have temperatures along with this map so it really gives you a good idea of where the precipitation is falling where our low pressure systems are like for instance that one over here near the california coast you can see we have a lot of rings and a concentrated in this area indicating some low pressure eventually you know you see some rain over there but as that ejects down into southern plains look at these temperatures here on the northwestern side of this i mean we are right on the line here 31 degrees 32 degrees 29 degrees that's just below freezing. Out in front of the storm, we're talking about 40s to 50s spreading across the southeast. So this is definitely bringing some warmer air into the United States. But just might have cool enough temperatures, especially as we move into the overnight periods, uh, into parts of northern Texas, going into Oklahoma and Kansas, according to the GFS, and then eventually moving off to the north and east, where it really starts to try to drop some snow up there in Minnesota, also Wisconsin as well. Look at this, 29, 31, 32, 33 degrees, decent low pressure system, decent warm up over here in the southeast too. We're talking about 50s and 60s for a lot of folks in Mississippi. Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, even moving up into South Carolina, those 50s just now creeping up into North Carolina as we move into the second 
of February, but definitely some snow chances possible over here. Let's go check out the Euro model and see if we see any agreement on this storm. Yeah, it looks like the Euro model starts to form this storm a little bit earlier, but still kind of on the 30th, late on the 30th, and eventually brings a little bit more snow into Oklahoma and Kansas. And then look how much this intensifies as it gets closer to Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, moving up into parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Still pretty warm though on that northeastern side. Not as clear cut and dry to tell what these lines mean on this model. But you know, once you get, you know, near the thousands here, you're talking about a low pressure. Once you get over a thousand ten, you're really talking about an areas of high pressure. And we got these little red lines down here that indicate some of our temperatures. There's 32 degrees right there. They're just barely hanging on to below freezing. Just enough to have some snow here. But folks, we are right under the line of this either being snow or rain. If we get a little bit more of a warm up on these trends, a lot of the snow is not going to happen. So a lot of uncertainty still exists, uh, even with our the potential for this first snowstorm. So if you're hearing people saying big snowstorm is coming with confidence as a snake oil salesman, it's like literally impossible to have confidence about a storm like this this far out. But I mean, there is definitely a signal there, something to watch, but I wouldn't really get excited about it just yet. After this storm, we have a, another potential for some snow that's going to potentially bring some snowfall all the way from Kansas, Nebraska, all the way up into the northern Ohio Valley for eventually turning into a rain snow sleep mix for a lot of folks. And eventually some more snow can move up into the northeast. This is on the Euro model. On the GFS model, though, after that first storm comes Comes through not really sold on that second storm really producing snow you can see it does have something there but the gfs mainly has rain so there's definitely some disagreements here a little bit low uh, weaker of a low pressure system not really mixing that cooler air moisture as well as the euro is leading to a lot less of a chance of a decent snowstorm again for the central plains and the ohio valley in the northeast but i will say the euro typically has a little bit better accuracy than the gfs but we're talking about you know a little bit better but still only about you know 30 percent accurate at this range so i'm really talking about the euro being around 30 percent accurate the gfs maybe somewhere around 25 to 28 percent accurate at this range for snowstorms so the signals there we'll keep watching it if anything changes we'll let you guys know in terms of the temperatures across the united states you can see that we're definitely gonna get a warm-up here in the southeast and also in the Ohio Valley, I mean, you guys have been dealing with negative degree temperatures recently. It's like some of your daytime temperatures at least are going to rise pretty close to 32 degrees, but then a dip into some teens in the nighttime. But then as we get into the 27th, start to see a little bit more of a widespread warm up all the way from Texas up into Nebraska, all the way over to areas like Virginia and North Carolina. And as I continue to push this forward, you see that that heat keeps kind of building here across the southeast. Going to the 29th, we could see 70s to 60s across southern Texas, moving into Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Southern Alabama, most of Georgia, most of South Carolina, all of Florida, and parts of North Ant Carolina and Virginia could get in those 60s as well. So a nice warm up for folks that honestly just don't want the cold. <laughs> I live in the northern southeast and that stuff sucks. <laughs> it's been one of the coldest, most miserable winters. I'm ready for it to end. But as we move into the 31st, it looks like those cooler temperatures do try to make a return back into the United States as we move into the second. And look at this, another resurgence of some warmth as we move into the third. We're getting into La La Land here, but I just want to see if we have any more intrusions of bigger cold being captured by any of these models yeah not really yeah no major uh, cold blasts uh, after this event so we'll see looks like temperatures are definitely going to be moderated in comparison to where we've been at least until the 31st to, to the second and then after that maybe potentially even more of a warm-up I have to be taking some of these low pressure systems a little bit more seriously for those chances for severe weather. Speaking of severe weather, this green stuff down here is storm food. Kind of need it. I mean, definitely going to have a, a thing in place here. Some low pressure, some stronger upper level and lower level winds possible with this. But you need that instability in order to get uh, severe weather. Without it, you know, in small marginal amounts of it, you're, you might get a small chance for severe weather. Um, but it should mainly be some thunderstorms. And as you can see, we're just really not seeing a big signal here. Here, uh, for instability until we move into the second where we might see that resurgence of severe weather return here in parts of Texas going into Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi as well. So we're going to be watching out for that signal. Decent amount of instability. I mean, we could be talking about severe weather possibilities as far north as Illinois and Indiana. But keep in mind, folks. This is well out into the future here. A lot of this stuff is going to change, but we're watching here for signals. Uh, just don't really have any very positive signals for super organized uh, severe weather. But thunderstorms uh, are definitely possible with the first wave coming in and then the second wave uh, maybe could have something a little bit more organized. So we'll be keeping an eye on it. 
get any uptrends we'll let you guys know but until then folks thank you so much for watching hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you guys on the next video peace